Hey guys, Contact Ruler 46 here for part 22 of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. <laughs> uh, so I decided this episode to get the All Night Mask now that I have the giant wallet and I'm actually able to afford it. So um, what I did is I just kind of farmed up some rupees and now I have 500. Uh, a quick way to actually get a bunch of rupees real fast is uh, if you're good at the archery game in Clock Town, you can, um, if you get a perfect score, you will get 200 rupees if you didn't already get a piece of heart or whatever you get from a perfect score. So, yeah, after that you get 200 rupees. And even if you don't get, like, the perfect score, each time you beat your record you get 50 rupees, which is not bad. Although you gotta remember, I also gotta remember that, um, you're paying 20 rupees per each time you play the game. So in reality you're getting 30 rupees and 180 rupees. But still, that's pretty good. Um, do that, like, get two of the, um, get the two silver rupees and get 200 rupees real quick, and then play the game, like, twice, and if you get a perfect score both times, then you're set. Of course, I didn't get a perfect score both times, because I'm kind of rusty. I mean, it took me a few times just to get a perfect score the other time, and it's been kind of a while since I've played this archery minigame, so, yeah. But now I just gotta wait for this guy to come and try to mug the old lady and that's about to happen since it's almost 12 o'clock so what you gotta do is you gotta save her from Sakon which would be right about now yep wow she's she's going pretty fast for someone that has no legs she's literally just gliding across I'm sorry okay well you will be well, now you slow down a bit, so Mr. Dancing and Prancing can come here and smack you. Anyway, you hit him once with your sword. Uh, you hit him once with your sword. There we go. Yeah, don't use arrows. If you use an arrow to, uh, to try to get back the bombs, you'll actually just blow up all the bombs in the bomb bag and kill Sakon and the bombs will be gone. Also, yeah, you actually kill Sakon. Like, he just disappears and he doesn't reappear ever again. So, yeah. You do actually kill him. But yeah, I think this is like the only Zelda game where you can actually kill an NPC. How gruesome. Anyway, it's not gruesome, I guess. He just kind of disappears. Well, because we already got the Blast Mash, all she does is say thanks. But... Now, we're set so that when the third day rolls around, we'll be able to get the Blast Mask. However, we don't have to wait for that. Um, I'm not going to just do that. I'm also going to do another side quest to get uh, what I'm pretty sure is another bottle. And uh, I think that's all I have to do. That's all I'm going to do, I mean. It's go to Milk Road. And then you, uh, I think it has to be daytime. I can switch that real fast, though. Yeah, go milk, go to Milk Road. And you gotta race these guys. Real quick, let's just change it to the second day. Alright. Also, the aliens already attacked now. If you go to Romani Ranch now, you'll notice that... Romani is missing, and so are all the cows. Also, um, whatchamacallit? Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, if you come back on the third day, yeah, I think I already mentioned, you'll see her with devoid of memories and personality. But hey, we're here on the Gorman track, which is actually the detour we had to take when saving Kremia from these guys. But these guys were wearing a mask, but it's totally obvious who these guys were. What do you want? You know what this place is? This is the Gorman Brothers Horse Training Center. You got no business here if you got no horse, now beat it scram. Suspicious Gorman Brothers were added to your notebook. Won't you buy some fresh milk? This is just between you and me. But the milk they produce down yonder at Romani Ranch is watered down a bit. It's not worth drinking. <laughs> they don't do that kind of thing here. Ours is the real deal. It's so fresh, always fresh and full of vitamins. It's true. I'll sell it cheap just for you. How about it? 
50 rupees, nah. Oh, really? Milk is the- Milk this good to call you- cost you a double in town, this is true. Well, yeah, so it's just regular milk, although funnily enough, the description will actually read that it is watered down. Um, but we do need to summon a Pona, so let's do that. Um, yeah, I think she'll come. Alright, well, here she is. She just spawned right in front of us. Anyway, so this guy says we don't have any business being here if we don't have a horse, but now we got our little pony. That's not what I meant to do. Climb. Can I not talk to you, or do I have to talk to the other guy? Uh, I guess I gotta talk to the other guy. There we go. Is that pathetic thing your horse? I would. Oh wait, he had. Nah, whatever. I'll do an accent. I would have guessed that little thing was a mule for sure. Ain't that right, little brother? Do you think a horse that pathetic would gallop if you pushed? Uh, forward on the control stick, or we'd run faster if you pressed A. Well, this guy's funny. Why don't you give us ten rupees for the chance to get for you to race against us? If you win, I'll give you something nice, kid. What'll you do? Hey, I'll race. It's a simple race. Just go once around the track, and if you can beat us to the finish line, you win. Yo, yeah, yo, yeah, you ready? <coughs> Surprisingly, this young little baby horse that we have is actually able to contend with these fully grown adult horses that are presumably trained to race since this is a racetrack that they're bred on. Anyway, you'll hear that these guys are just constantly uh, whipping their horse to go faster. Also, I just I ran out of boost. I'm gonna have to wait. Ah, man, these guys have all their boosts. You have to, like, really manage your boost. But, on the bright side, you can take these shortcuts. For some reason, they won't take the shortcuts. But a Pona can, so we can just jump over that with our little pony. Oh, no. Ah, I didn't know those patches slowed you down. Well, let's try to use our boost. Crap. All right, it looks like we lost this time because of the freaking mud. And that's irritating. Well, now these guys are gonna laugh at us. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> we win. Do you like? We'll let you race us again. Of course I will. All right, hopefully I win this time. Um, if not, then I'll cut it to when I in, when I do win. But yeah, I'll do this one more whole time around the track. I, it's probably not that interesting to watch the same thing twice, but I don't know. Maybe like, maybe you want to see how I do this? Like, maybe there's a strategy? I don't know. I'm not trying to use any strategy. I'm just trying to like manage my, uh, my boosts. I'm trying not to let it reach zero, because once it like reaches zero, you go pretty dang slow. So yeah. It's like in the new Zelda games when you use all your uh, stanima, you uh, you go slow. I think. Anyway, we jumped over that mud pile. Oh crap! I didn't even realize that I used up all my boosts. Ah. And now I'm probably gonna lose again. Ah shoot! All right. You know what? I'm just gonna cut it to when I win. So I'll see you guys in a while. I didn't have enough area to jump. That's what I did. Like, you can jump that, but you need some time to do that. Like, I didn't have enough time to build up speed. But anyway, I'll race them one more time, and I'll be right back. Alright, looks like I win this one. Just barely. Yeah, I guess you have to do it in a minute. And now these guys are enraged. I can't believe we lost! Big bro, I wonder if we can give that to this guy. We gotta give him something. Well, he's a kid. What can he do with it? She'll be fine. Oh! Okay, so we don't get a bottle. We actually get the Garo mask. That's actually pretty useful. Uh, the wandering. We're actually. We might need this, actually, for, uh, for this next area. It's funny how that worked out twice. 
do a side quest and get something that will be useful to us in the next area. But anyway, the Noandri ninja spirits who want, appear at Ikana can't, uh, once wore this. Exchange, you can't tell anyone where we got this. <laughs> you rubbed the Gorman brothers' noses in it. This was added to your notebook. So, yeah, uh... I don't think... I mean, you don't need to come to place... Don't come to a place like this on your horse. Alright. So, yeah, I think we're good. Um... What else can I do? Um... I don't know, I'll think of something. In the meantime, uh, I'll cut it or something. Actually, one way you can get a lot of rupees is if you manage to kill this thing. Um... What's it called? A Takuri? Run, this bird steals your items. Come on, what are you doing? Just standing around. Yeah, if you kill it, you get a lot of rupees. But, beware. Because if it touches you, then um, it steals your sword. And then you have to go back to the curiosity shop to buy it back. Which is not good. Good thing... Okay, I took a hit there. Fortunately, it didn't uh, steal my sword. Yeah, you see, this thing just drops rupees. Uh, maybe I shouldn't shoot it when it's out there, because now it's over the barrier. It should be flying towards me any second now. Alright. I do remember that this thing has a lot of health. One more, maybe? I don't know. Man, this thing is taking forever to die. There we go, we got it. And we get uh, that rupee. I'm not sure if that was like a huge rupee or what, but... I think... I don't remember if that was like 100 or is that 50 or if it was 200. But I know that was a lot of rupees because you saw how big that rupee was. But yeah, um, with that, I... I don't know, I think I'll just skip to the third day and I'll see you guys right after that, so, yeah. Alright, so when I was waiting for the, um, curiosity shop to open, I just kind of looked around. There's not too many big deals what I'm about to show you, but I thought it was kind of cool. Um, in the bomb shop, there's actually this little thing on the side. It says, uh, plan moon trip, experiment, mem experiment memo, try using bomb powered flight. You can actually look and see his uh, diagram for a rocket to go to the moon. And it turns out that rocket is this thing. I didn't even know what this was. I thought it was just a decoration. But now I, I looked at these wings and I'm like, oh, it's a rocket. And then there was another thing um, I saw. It wasn't This one's not as cool, actually, as the rocket. Um, oh, hey. Okay, this guy doesn't open. Uh, I guess it doesn't open until the curiosity shop opens, which is right now. So now we can go in. It's 12, 10 o'clock. There's nothing here. That's strange. But anyway, here you can see my history of tools not for sale. Uh, so I'm wondering, this guy never leaves. Like, you never see him go outside and into the curiosity shop, which makes me wonder if there's like a secret passageway. But anyway, so yeah, that's kind of what I saw. It wasn't that big a deal. But anyway, uh, if we come in here, we can see there's a mask there. Come in. You gotta look around. I'm doing a special sale. Check it out. <laughs> Tonight's bargain is the all-night mask for use at bedtime. I forgot when this was made, but it sure is a freaky mask. See? When you put it on, you can try and try to fall asleep, but you won't be able to. Pretty creepy, huh? What will it be? Check the bargain. Alright. What do you do? Tiny's bargain is all night mass for use at that time. Okay, so he's just gonna say the same thing. But yeah, you see, it's 500 rupees. You won't get sleepy when you wear this mask. And I'll buy it. So yeah, for 500 rupees, we got this mask, which is really only useful for one thing, despite how expensive it is. It won't let you drift off to sleep even if you want to. You bought a weird mask. This was added to your notebook. Oh, uh, I don't have nothing else to sell you, kid. I kid you not. Uh, pay you good for it. Show it to me to see. Do we have anything to sell? 
I don't know. Will you buy bombs? Sorry, but I can't sell that here. Okay. So you can only buy um, bottled goods. I don't know. Well, so yeah, I guess that uh, that does that for this episode. You know what? I'm going to just do real quick. I'm going to show you what you can do with it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cut it one more time. I'm not sure what the time is, but I'm pretty sure I'm approaching my limit. But yeah, uh, I'll be back right when I set up the little side quest. So, yeah. Alright, so... Um, what the we need this mask for um, is uh, if we go to this clock plot in in um, East Clocktown, we can actually go and talk to or go to this room first, this one, and talk to Andrew's mother. Andrew's the was the lady at the front. This is her. I think it was her grandmother. Maybe yeah, it was her grandmother. But anyway, uh, she confuses us for her son, which is Andrew's father. So she's all like, oh, Tortoise, did you finish helping father? So she's going to tell us a story. I'll just read this. Then let mother read you a story. Now, which story would you like to hear? Um, so you see that um, she'll tell you stories, and you can see, like, you can pass time for two hours or until morning. However, the thing is about these stories is that apparently they're so dull that... Link actually falls asleep when you read them without your mask. Angie's grandmother's empty notebook. But if you wear your mask, then you can talk to her, and um, you can have her read one of these two stories. I'll start with the Carnival of Time since that's the first option. So yeah, Carnival of Time it is, huh? The carnival is almost here, so it's good for you to learn its meaning. It's a, little it's a little long, but I'll read it with some enthusiasm. <clears throat> the Carnival of Time. Each year, the season of harmony begins with the sun and moon, when the sun and moon are in alignment, paying homage to the way that uh, that both nature and time are tirelessly in the. Yeah, you 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 see that? I just can't read. The Carnival of Time is when the peoples of the four worlds celebrate that harmony and request fruitfulness for the year. Oh, that's creepy. Uh, sorry, I was just looking at some of these details. It's been a while since I've seen this particular uh, image. But anyway, for ages, people have worn masks resembling the giants who are the gods of the four worlds. Now it's become a custom for each person to bring a handmade mask of the Carnival of Time. It is said that a couple... If a couple united on this day of the festival and dedicated a mask as a sign of their union, it would bring luck. The centerpiece of the carnival is the clock tower, and, the eve and on the eve of the festivities, the doors to its roofs are open. From atop the clock tower roof, a ceremony to call the gods is held in an ancient song, and an ancient song is sung. All these festivities for the carnival of time are held so that we may ask the gods for a rich harvest in the year to come. And then they just skip over the rest of the story. He did a good job. That's it. That's all for Tortoise. Now, when does the clock tower uh, and the roof open? At the eve of the festival? Or I don't know. He did a good job remembering. This That's the boy I'm proud of. I'll give you some candy as a prize. That's some good candy. You got a piece of heart. You assemble a new heart container. Your maximum energy has increased. You were praised by the old woman. So that's your notebook. Alright, so now we can, uh, we'll read the other story real quick. So let's see, which one? Four Giants, till morning. The Four Giants, is it? This is quite long, but it's a good story, uh, for you to hear, so I'll read it with extra gusto. <clears throat> the Four Giants. This tale's from long ago when all the people weren't separated into the four worlds like they are now. In those times, all the people lived together, and the Four Giants among them. On that day, on the day of the festival that celebrates the harvest, the giants spoke to the people. We have chosen to guard the people while we sleep. A hundred steps north, a hundred steps south, a hundred steps east, and a hundred steps west. If you have need, call us in a loud voice by declaring something such as, The mountain blizzard has trapped us! Or, The ocean is about to swallow us! Your cries shall carry to us. 
Ugh, that's weird. Now then, there was one who was shocked and saddened by all this. A little imp, aka Skull Kid. The imp was a friend of the giant since before they had created the four worlds. Why must you leave? Why do you not stay? The childhood friend felt neglected, so he separated his anger, or he spread his anger across the four worlds. Repeatedly, he wronged all people. Overwhelmed with misfortune, the people sang the song of prayer to the giants who lived in each of the four compass directions. The giants heard their cry and responded with a roar. O oh, Imp, O oh, Imp, we are the protectors of the people. You have caused the people pain, O oh, Imp. Leave these four worlds, otherwise we shall tear you apart. The Imp was frightened and saddened. He had lost his old friends. The Imp returned to the heavens and harmony was restored to the four worlds. And the people rejoiced as they worshipped the giants of the four worlds like gods, and they lived happily ever after. Good job, wasn't that fun, Tortoise? What do the people call the giant? Used to call the what do the people do to call the giants? Sing a song. That's right. You couldn't just sing that song anymore. Hundred steps north, south, east, west. Okay. That spot where those giants have parted is right in the middle of this very town. So this was uh, built in that area, I guess, to commemorate where they separated. So I guess um. That actually didn't give us anything, but it did give us some lore, I guess. And it's actually kind of sad, it explains the origin of Skull Kid. I mean, not his true origin, because his true origin is kind of explained in Ocarina of Time, that he was, like, all Skull Children, or all, yeah, Skull Children, I guess, Skull Kid. Um, he was a kid that got lost in the forest and got turned into uh, Skull Kid. By some curse in the Lost Woods. But anyway... It's kind of sad, apparently he just missed his friends and he got angry, which was not very good, of course, I mean, just because your friend leaves doesn't mean that you should, um, you know, wreak havoc, but then these giants, instead of, you know, like, telling them that it's all gonna be good, they said we'll tear you apart, which probably was really sad for him to hear. So yeah, it is kind of a sad story, but hey. They said he returned to the, uh, to the heavens, and what I think it means by that is because uh, I don't think Skull Kid is part of this world. I think he's part of the same world as Link in Hyrule, so that's probably what they mean by that. But anyway, enough about that. It looks like this episode went on for a long time, so yeah, I'll just end it off here. And if you guys like this video, be sure to check out my other videos, and um, yeah. Check out my Wind Waker playlist as well. If you want to see what else I can put up on YouTube, then stick around, and I'll see you guys then. In the meantime, uh, I'll see you guys later, and I hope you guys have a great day.